Out of Utah 2022 looks to be one of the biggest years ever for racing games. The release schedule is absolutely packed. Now I've put together as many as I as I have information on at this stage. There may be others that just miss out and if there are do let me know in the comments. But first let's take a look at some of the big racing games for 2022. So kicking off then with Seto Corsa Competizione for the next gen which will be released on the 24th of February and of course there'll be a wealth of new features to that which I'll outline in separate videos but obviously improved frame rates, resolutions, general detail and upgrades to the whole package uh, and um, obviously extra DLC added as well. So lots to look forward to with Seto Corsa. This is the ideal time to release Seto Corsa. It's the, the next gen formats have the power. This is the version I've been looking forward to and I can't wait to get on it, put a bit of time into it as well. So set of course a next gen one to look out for early this year. Circuit Superstars will be coming to PS4 on January the 27th. Again, looking forward to that. If you haven't played it already, good fun, top down gaming action. Grid Legends, and I don't have the date in front of me, but Grid Legends is going to be on the way. We've had lots of gameplay on the channel and lots of information, including the release date. Uh, again, look out for that. We'll have a whole bunch of content on that. And I will be, uh, if you've got questions about it, looking to answer those questions, concerns. Let's take a look at the early build. Let's look, see where they've improved it. Lots of content on that to come. Monster Energy Supercross the Game 5. Now, I don't have Monster Energy Supercross the Game 5, so you'll see some clips of trailer, or perhaps you'll see some gameplay clips of the older games. Either way, that's coming this year. There's bound to be some new changes. We'll see what they have in store. It's one of those games that's almost too regular. It's the problem with the, the yearly games. They need to find something to make it fresh and new every year. Always a challenge. But let's see what they've got in store. Then moving on to one of the big games of the year. Gran Turismo 7. You know, it's a game that's probably two years late. It's a game that's obviously now focused on PS4. I'm a broken record, I know, but I will keep saying it. And I look forward to playing it. You know, despite everything, it's going to be a game that uh, maximizes the graphics technology of the last generation. And of course, when that's upgraded to PS5, no doubt it'll look very fluid. Uh, and I look forward to online racing and everything being reset, if you like. A whole new group of fans, new tracks, new options, the option to build your car the way you want it and go on that Gran Turismo journey expect extensive coverage on Gran Turismo 7 on the channel this year that's going to be one I will play a lot uh, and I will hopefully enjoy it and hopefully you will enjoy it too and there'll be a fair amount of streams on it as well MotoGP 2022 you know positive place MotoGP it's going from strength to strength let's see how it develops again this year and what the new features are a new features trailer should be out very soon or announcement trailer should be out very soon and we'll see what they've got in store for this season. MX versus ATV Legends, or the MX versus ATV name is back and looks interesting in the trailer. Uh, it's coming out this year, very few details, and I don't have a firm release date yet, but we'll keep an eye out for this one. More dirt biking, quad biking, buggy action. F1 2022. This is a big year for Formula One. It's a big year in terms of the reset of the cars, but it gives Codemasters the opportunity to completely reset how they make the F1 games, the physics, the design, the look, the feel to prepare their next gen of Formula 1 for the next 10 years. Or will they just put new cars on and, and refine the old physics and not do much else? This is an opportunity. Let's hope uh, Codemasters grab it with both hands. It could be very exciting from a gamer's perspective if we do see something truly next gen and a step forward in that overall physics model that's really what i'd like to see dakar desert rally dakar is back since 2018 the developers have been working hard this game has serious potential you know the previous game had a lot of potential it just wasn't ready it needed a lot of work they've done it now let's hope it's well tested it's one of those games that could really do with a demo and feedback from the fans so they can literally put it the way fans want it they can fill in the blanks fill in all the bits that need work and get it ready for launch this has a lot of potential it's kind of on its own uh, 
you know the sort of open world driving expansive driving in this way and it it's something that if the simulation of the vehicles is right it feels good to play you enjoy driving these environments there's a lot driving fans can get out of this but it needs great physics and great environments and a really rewarding driving model to make you feel like you're interacting with that environment this is something i felt that dirt 5 didn't have when i was on the rock crawling cars i just didn't it wasn't enough challenge it wasn't interaction with the environment i really need to feel those environments to feel like you're driving over those rugged areas and really a map reading and a co-driver experience that's intuitive and that works well a big game potentially this year Dakar Desert Rally. Now we're going to look at a few indie games in the middle of the year. Indie games. Uh, classic sport driving. Sounds like a Lotus Elise challenge from the Amiga back in the day. Uh, various types of modes will be in the game. Various types of handling. The difficulty increases rapidly. Uh, it's been taking some time to develop. Uh, the analog control of the car is there. But it does take a bit of getting used to. Uh, looking into the distance and assessing how to take those corners certainly one for the retro the modern retro gaming fan then we have gravity chase futuristic driving f-zero style gameplay f-zero gx style gameplay inside tubes outside tubes uh, funky graphics will there be enough in the game to make it all come together to make it worthwhile well certainly there's a fan base behind it it's been in development for quite a few years now and it has some potential from the indie front so we'll wait and see on that wasteland vacation not much on this just a demo may not come out uh, in 2022 but you never know it looks very nice indeed not officially a driving game but my goodness the cars look stunning the environments look stunning i quite like it to have a go on it so uh, it's, it's on the radar just for the driving bits wasteland vacation victory heat rally that's right we've covered this already in the demo form wonderfully colorful nice style amazing music uh, victory heat rally has real potential but it needs a lot in terms of in-game content and again it needs to take on board sort of fan feedback in just getting that experience refined there's potential here for something but it still needs work either way i did enjoy i did find it fun and a somewhat addictive experience if only racing against your own ghost, which bodes well in terms of racing against your friends when they're on there as well. So Victory Heat Rally. Driftmaster, uh, it reminds me of the art of rally, stuff like that. Uh, again, it's one of those games that's been in development, sort of hell if you like, for, for some time it appears. Uh, it may or may not come out this year, or it may become vaporware, you never know. But Driftmaster is their sword car. i following this as well, sword car. Uh, again it's a bit like Carmageddon and yeah you drive around streets chopping people up and uh, having a laugh so that's a sword car buck up and drive don't know much about this game looks incredible it's one of those games that has such a unique art style it's like driving combat action I mean really I don't know what's going on but you're drifting you've got amazing anime style very aggressive looking design it's unique it's cool it's cell shaded i like it buck up and drive let's see how it all comes together in the final game will the gameplay work that's the main thing getting the gameplay all together working but we'll wait and see on that that's one to look out for buck up and drive okay so back on to the main games to finish off the list we've got wrc 11 coming this year the final wrc game from kiloton studio what incredible work they've done over the last few years to rescue from where they were to bringing the pieces together to building a game to sort of finish the ps4 generation which is what this finishes in style uh, and it is a game that i look forward to playing if the the way wrc 10 brought the elements together and took on board community feedback is almost unlike anything else out there apart from say Assetto Corsa it's great to see developers listening to uh, player feedback and bring it together looking forward to WRC 11 unannounced racing game that's right there's a big unannounced racing game still to come this year and I can't say anything about it even though I know what it is but we will uh, come back to unannounced racing game another time it is significant 
Redout 2. Yeah, that's right. Redout 2 is a game. That I love Redout. Futuristic racing, gaming action, uh, running on the modern consoles, 4K, 60 FPS, maybe even 120 FPS. If they can get the style of the craft right and the attitude of the game, then they can bring a lot to it. it the, the first game, despite being fluid with amazing music, tracks and ambition, was a little bit soulless in terms of overall character design. It had no character to it. Let's hope Red Out 2 brings that together along with a bunch of elements online, multiplayer, and puts together a really nice futuristic racing package. Test Drive Unlimited uh, Solar Crown. Well, what more needs to be said about this? One of the biggest games of the year by a mile. Who would have thought it on the year that Gran Turismo 7 was released that we could have a test drive game that could be the biggest game of the year, even bigger than Gran Turismo 7 if they get it right across formats. This game has epic scale. It's, it's an ambitious game on another level. And uh, with the combined with the handling of WRC 11, Wow, there's, there's real potential here. I am excited for the potential that this game offers. I can't wait to see it. I look forward to driving a range of epic cars very fast with great handling on a level we've not experienced in an open world game of this style. This, 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 this could be a rewarding driving experience at last for, these, for the range of sports cars, off-road cars, and everything in between. Real potential here. A big game, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. Don't forget that. Forza Motorsport. Now, this is an outside chance. This looks more like a 2023 game. But either way, we will see a new trailer this year. And who knows, it could creep into this year. But I'm still thinking it could creep into 2023. And they'll, they'll instead, that Microsoft will continue to focus on Forza Horizon 5 for this year. Uh, while they buy themselves more time in making Forza Motorsport the best game it can be. Gran Turismo has left an open goal for them now in terms of the driving genre. The, a game focused on the series consoles can do more than, you know, than you know, free from the shackles of the Xbox One now and the last generation. This is an opportunity for Forza Motorsport to get a three, four, five year head start on a new Gran Turismo game that's dedicated for the next gen. So let's wait and see, but probably 2023. New Need for Speed. Now we know Need for Speed is coming back. Need for Speed is a messy franchise now at this stage. It, it doesn't know what it is. It doesn't know where it's going. It's had lots of different developers. Everybody has their rose tinted specs, I find, as to what they consider their best Need for Speed from when they remember years ago. Uh, and I kind of feel Need for Speed is a bit lost. It needs a total rethink and it needs to be done properly, not rushed out the door. So let's see if EA can make the difference again or will we just move on to something else before we know it. It's, it, you know, lots of people shout about it. EA will make a big marketing push about it. But will it be worth playing? Let's hope, at the very least, it has steering wheel compatibility and manual gears from the off. Let's hope they understand the general driving experience before anything else. And let's see where it goes. But Need for Speed. Expect that to be announced probably around E3. British Touring Cars. Coming from Motorsport Games to finish off the year. Uh, again, there's great potential here with uh, Steve Hood and Paul Coleman. Uh, from X Code Masters working together, Paul Coleman, the creator of obviously the Dirt series and Dirt Rally, uh, and Steve Hood from the uh, Formula One games from years ago, working together. They've got an idea. They know what they need to do. They've got the right people around them. Let's hope British Touring Cars is everything it could be. It could be the the revisit to Toka Toka Touring Cars that everybody dreams of. Again, there's rose tinted specs around Toka, but I'm not going to go into that let's see where they end up there's always potential so that is just the tip of the iceberg of the racing games that are coming out uh, and i look forward to the potential uh, that, that they have in offer for so many genres and types that we can experience so 2022 lots on the way lots of exciting games that we'll be looking at in massive amounts of detail 
and I'll be doing my best to grind out the videos as quickly as possible on all of these titles, especially all the previews, as soon as they become available. Now, just to think, in terms of the news that's out there, imagine all of these racing games, uh, all of the esports and the activity around that, and all of the DLC packs. You know, you can expect plenty of DLC for all of these titles, plus all the titles that have been released in 2021 and before that as well. This year is absolutely packed when it comes to automotive gaming goodness. And this is just the beginning as well. I'm really looking forward to games as they move into the next generation. We see more and more upgrades and we see the next steps of the big titles coming in the future as well. So it's been an exciting selection to look forward to. I look forward to the secrets of the, the stuff we still don't know about and I'll do my very best to bring you all of that news here on the channel. And uh, as ever, I will say do like and subscribe. Uh, do uh, follow me on uh, various social media and also Twitch now uh, streaming on Mondays, Wednesdays and Thursdays at 3.30 p.m. UK time. I'll keep that going as well and do pop on there and say hello and I'll be testing all of these games and more. But um, that's it from me for now. As ever, more soon. Hello viewers, well thanks for watching the video today. Do like and subscribe, it supports what we do. Do become a YouTube member, YouTube Patreon supports all of our content you see on the channel and of course lots of gaming from retro to modern games. I love it all in terms of racing action. So click on one of the two videos just there to find out more.